and they were rampaged along, won their first two games. They've lost their last two, but they could have probably won both of them. Fantastic looking facility there in the deep south. I'm sure they're going to come out firing tonight. From memory, he was leading last week. Are you going to be leading this week or? In the bottom with six points and second for bottom with throw. Yes and no. Yes and no. It paid off for them. They got a two, double the four, one six points. Depends what the teams are bumping with, isn't it? Welcome to the Bowls Hour, brought to you by Somerset Retirement Villages and Dynasty Apparel. Today we are doing a Bowl 35 special and talking with Sheldon Bagri Howley, Dave Clark, and Selena Goddard about their experiences with the Bowls 35 format. First, though, my co host, Alex Reed, and I, Erin, not Miles, <laughs> are going to review some listener feedback as well as talk through what the upcoming Bowl 35 National Interclub Finals is going to look like this weekend. Hi, Alex. Hello, that's a tongue twister, the Bowl 35 National Interclub Finals competition. I'm impressed you got through it. Tell you what. <laughs> Certainly not the second take, eh? No. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, people might have noticed Erin uh, isn't Miles. Nope. No, 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 she's not. Uh, nope. Miles isn't around for this episode, maybe not for a few more. Um, we'll just see how that sort of goes. That or he's dressed differently this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It's good. I'm looking forward to this episode, Erin. As you said, um, it's a Bolsbury 5 focus. So we're talking to Sheldon, who's played for the Gore Rams in the initial uh, original Bolsbury 5 yep. competition. Uh, Dave Clark has played for the Manurewa Kites yep. uh, either last year or the year before. COVID's done my head in, I can't remember. Whenever the last thing we televised, <laughs> that's when Dave played, and Selena, uh, Stoke player. Um, so that's going to be really interesting to sort of pick their brains about how they feel about Bowls 3-5 and what their experiences have been, and also what they're thinking about this new upcoming uh, national competition. But first, Erin, as we said, listener feedback. So last week, uh, Miles and I had a chat about what format is best to use in bowls competitions and there's five or six I mean there's a huge amount of formats you can use we spoke about a two live system we spoke about round robin uh, we spoke about sectional play and and knockout and I thought we'll ask the uh, community and we've been using Facebook to do that recently as well as you can email us at info at bowlsnewzealand.co.nz but I asked the Facebook community, so I've taken a couple of comments that we'll read out and just sort of mull over, and then we can move on to the Bowls 3-5 thing. So um, through the listener feedback, Roger Webb said, we pay a subscription to a bowling club to play bowls, not to sit on the sidelines watching others play bowls. Uh, therefore, I believe that sectional play whereby you have to win, say, three out of four games to qualify for the next round is the better system, and he reckons that's because it encourages the average bowler to enter club championships, as they know they guaranteed a set number of games. Fair call. Yeah, it's an okay. I understand that logic. You know, if you uh, are paying a subscription, you should be getting X amount of games. Yeah. Um, and saying that, I'm a bowls tragic, so I'd quite happily, if I lost my first two and got knocked out, I'm, You'd be I'm happy to on sit the on sidelines. sidelines. I'd probably pay an entry fee. <laughs> 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 yeah, they start selling tickets. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, each to their own. Um, and Morris Catamold spoke about the fact that he said, I'm in a small club, the two-life system seems to work out good, apart from the fours and triples, which are around Robin. And yeah, that's a fair call as well. I think, I mean, every club's going to be a different size, isn't it, Erin? Yeah. yeah, you'll have some clubs that have a an entry number around eight to ten people, I'm guessing, yeah. and then you might have others who have hundreds. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I think a club needs to work with who they've got and what their majority voice says to yeah. get their players down there playing the competition. Yeah, definitely. So I think, um, you know, in conclusion, we had a really mixed response. I think probably the answer is, what do they say, horses for courses? Is yeah. that how it works? Six or one, half a dozen of the yeah, other. you know. Yep. Whatever works for a club is whatever yep. works for a club. And if your members are happy, you're on a win there. So yeah, definitely. That, that's our listener feedback segment done. I thought we could move on to chat a bit about the Bowls 3-5 uh, Interclub Finals now, Ian, if you want. So for Joe Bloggs out there, what are they? They're coming up next weekend. What, what is it? They're this weekend, not next weekend. Yes, that's what yep, I meant. Yep. yep. Bowls 3-5 is a new format of bowls that we started up in 2018 as a Sky Sport League. We took six teams from around New Zealand and put them onto TV twice a week. Um, and the aim behind that was to get a very, very different looking short format version of bowls mm -hmm. out there into a wider watcher. So uh, 
the tragics like you, Alex. We'll go down to... <laughs> <laughs> well, Let's that, call us fans. Mean. Should we that's call us mean. fans? Um, yeah, <laughs> bowlers will go down. They will play their bowls. They will sit on the sideline and they will watch their bowls. They know where to find it. They can find it at their club. They can find it online if they want to watch one of our streams or if they want to watch nationals or any one of our competitions that we've also covered as well. Mm-hmm. What we're trying to do with this one is we're trying to get in front of people who wouldn't go down to a bowling club, who wouldn't search out a live stream of a bowls competition as well. So putting it into that TV environment means you're going to get the channel flickers. So there's, they're wondering what to watch. There's nothing else. Flick, flick, flick. Oh, this is cool. Actually, yeah. I might know that person. I went to school with that person or that's my Nana's next door neighbor or yeah. that's uh, my um, old teacher, you know, why are they on TV? And it, get, it gets it gets a wide, wide range of people watching something that is not normally in front of them and available to see. And that's just to to get them seeing bowls in a, a shorter format so that they think that it can fit into their lifestyle a little bit easier than all day on a Saturday and all day on a Sunday. Yeah. They, they've watched it, they've seen that the game is nearly finished and they will go, I want to go and try this on a Wednesday or a Thursday and Twilights is where that is and you can get them down to the bowling club and get them playing what they've seen on TV. It just makes it a little bit easier to get it uh, picked up as a sport by a lot of other people who aren't normally engaged. Yeah, so that's our format. That's the format. And we're playing that. This weekend. This weekend. A national interclub. And that's in lieu of, because we had a TV event that you spoke about. That ran yes. for three years. Yes. That was great. It was good. It's time. It got fizzed by COVID <laughs> last year. It's, oh, yeah, it's a shame. Terrible, it's a shame. It? So yes. is this, did you think, oh, the TV got fizzed by COVID. It's the finish of that contract. So we don't know what Bosley 5 is going to look like on um commercial television or you want to call it going forward did you think right we've got an opportunity now with this national bowl three five to make it a really big event that's gonna make up for it did you feel like there was lost stuff to to catch up on a little bit of that so it is a very very good competition in its own right that has been picked up by a number of clubs and centers around new zealand and they want to get in because the the Mm. teaser of um, getting into TV was they had to win their way through a national competition to get on TV and that kept the TV competition very very um, interactive as well so you had to win to stay in TV you could win you could win the prize that's great Um, but you also had to you had to win your way to stay in and if you didn't win then there were people nibbling at your heels wanting to jump up and get in great for a bowling club great for exposure and great to keep a different uh, cycle of people coming through every single season as well Um, COVID not really helping the whole situation. We had a good event last year where we were going to take two new teams. So the Hastings Hornets and the Nelson Spirit were going to join us into that sports Sky Sports League there. And they weren't able to. So we're really excited to be able to take the TV teams that would have played last year and put them in with all of the winners from around New Zealand yeah. to take 32 teams to Nainai this weekend where we will have an overall winner um, How and we will, it will be covered, it will be covered through our Bowls New Zealand streaming systems and wherever we put uh, that, whether it's in Facebook, whether you find the links online on YouTube, on our website keep keep checking all of our yeah, channels, yeah. they'll be there somewhere yeah. uh, they'll be easy to find um, so there'll be plenty of plenty of coverage of it on your screens as well. Um, and then what that looks like in the future, we're still working through at the moment. But it is it is a competition that I don't think is, is going anywhere. Um, I don't want it to go anywhere. I've had too much fun with it, and I don't even play in it. So <laughs> that's excellent. That's good because it's technically it's a national title, isn't it? So you get a point towards your silver star when you win this one. I'm gonna leave that with you. No, you do. Yep, I know this yep. for sure. You get a point towards your silver star, so it's on the same level as if you win a national inter centre or yeah. a national inter club or one yep. of our national champion of champion yep. events. So we rate it highly, yep. so it'll hang around. And it'll be cool, you know, I can see, you know, if I looked into my crystal ball, um, we want uh, uh, Bowls Through 5 back on television, it might not be as a TV league, but if this weekend is successful and there's uh, top bowlers playing, surely in two or three or four years, maybe, maybe it could maybe, uh, pop back maybe up sooner, on television. Maybe sooner than that. Who knows? But who knows? Who knows where it's going to go? <laughs> but we want it there, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm, ex- yeah. I'm excited. So yeah. if t- people do want to check it out, our website's probably the place to go. Website will be the best website. YouTube channel and um, just keep keep an eye out on any updates on Facebook as well. But website will definitely have those links already up and going. Thank you to Tamara. And if they have we told people where it is if they physically want to go down and have a look. 
Nai Nai Bowling Club. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. can't remember if I said it or not. So if you want to... If you <laughs> Let's want, say it again, Nai Nai Bowling Club. <laughs> if you want, and just Google where it is. If yeah. you want to go have a look, Nai Nai Bowling Club, they've got a no- lovely new artificial there. They've replaced the carpet, so there'll be no excuses from the bowlers. <laughs> it's a perfect ca- a perfect carpet, um, so people can come down and watch, and I think we'd encourage the crowd to get a bit raucous, wouldn't we? A little bit, yeah. We love a sing-along. That's cool. So, right, I think we sort of, um, we've chatted about the listener feedback in the Bowls 3-5. Uh, who are we going to talk to next, Erin? Coming up next is Sheldon Bagri Howley here on the Bowls Hour. Welcome back to the Bowls Hour, brought to you by Somerset Retirement Villages and Dynasty Apparel. On the line now, we have Sheldon Bagri Howley from the Gore Rams. Gore was one of the original six TV teams selected to play in the Sky Sport League of Bowls 3-5 back in 2018. Um, we've got a Bowls 3-5 special in the podcast today. So what inspired your club to get involved in the Bowls 3-5 competition? Um, well, that's actually quite a tough question because uh, the, the club wasn't overly inspired at the start. So me Whoa. and Caleb were trying, yeah, me, and Caleb and I were trying to do it off our own bat yep. to start with. But um, but once uh, with lots of explaining and um, and everything like that, the club got 100 percent on board and um, and yeah, that, that it greatly benefited us. Really, we're sort of one of the the well known clubs now with the Gore Rams around the country. Mm. So. Um, I think it's been worthwhile. Yeah, hindsight being the great thing that it is, you think your club's all on board with it now, definitely, then hey. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Good system. So what was it like? Yeah. um, Because it's been so long, I remember Point Chev. Um, Did Bowls New Zealand let the teams know, eh? Because we have to put in, you put out a tender, didn't you? Yeah, so teams, bowling clubs across New Zealand were invited to pitch as to why they would make a good team for the televised league, for the Sky Sport League. And then they went through a, a process as to what was expected of them and what they were going to get out of it and so on as well. So it was a big ask for clubs. So you can yeah. see why there was a little bit back at you, Sheldon, from your club, because it's a big, a long way to come up from Gore every single week. Yes, it was. It was quite uh, quite taxing, but um, it was a good way to get off work, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. what, what was it like when Bowls New Zealand gave you the phone call or the email or the whatever it was that's like... You're in the TV league on this on the Sky Sport thing. What was the reaction? Um, it was sort of it was quite weird actually because um, we weren't overly expecting to be in because um, our our ploy was trying to come across as a young team, which um, which we brought Ashley into to um, to kick that off. So we we're kind of hoping that we we're going to get in, but then once we did, it was sort of oh okay <laughs> now we're, now we're, now we're now we're committed. Um, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, fair enough. And it was a good um, it was a good first season. Mostly, wasn't it? Alex, oh, is sitting, speak, speak Alex, yeah, <laughs> Alex is sitting here with a big smile on his face. I wonder why that is. Uh, who was who were in the final of no, that season? We got season. lucky to be fair, but that's yeah. okay. Yeah, um, it's it's uh, it's one of those ones that you can't believe that you you only lose three ends and you lose fifteen grand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's entirely fair. I don't begrudge you that one iota, um, Sheldon. I, I rewatched the uh, we put the final up on the Facebook page. And uh, during the lockdown, oh, right. r- lockdown maybe? maybe, and I rewatched yeah. it, and I was like, okay, so we won three ends. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I think credit to the Gore Rams for bringing a little bit of emotion out of Alex for that competition. After all of the comments about how he <laughs> he showed nothing, gave away nothing on TV until That's the final good. bowl. Life is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so that was the first year, and you guys played the next two, and were really, really competitive. What was your um, after a couple of years in that in the Bowls Through Five televised? Um, league, the Sky TV thing. What are your takeaways from that? Did you enjoy being part of that of that league, and what was the feedback back home? Oh, one hundred percent. It was sort of one of those one-off experiences that you wouldn't expect. Um, well, I, I never expected to to sort of be a part of that. But um, the experiences to take away was um, just sort of how how different the actual the the bowls can be when it's on on TV and everything like that. Like it's you don't see. Um, that sort of atmosphere in the general general bowl scene. So it's quite good to have something really different and right out there um, on TV. 
Yeah, and you were one of the skip children of most of those um, things. And I think there was only two or three years got really properly pumped up. Did that sort of, did the TV uh, make that happen, or is that how you are when you skip usually, like when you're playing a bowl and you sort of get right pumped up and behind it, which is great for television? Was that a TV plan, yeah, or was well, it just a general, a general thing? No, it's sort of a general thing. My mind sort of goes blank, and I start acting like an idiot. So, <laughs> um, but no, it, it, it makes it... Um, it makes it a bit more lively, and uh, and it's quite good to see people, you know, get excited and enthusiastic about a bowl that's coming down that's, you know, potentially going to win them a great amount of money. So it's sort of, um, yeah, I, I like to carry on like that yeah. in my in my normal bowls and get excited and. Otherwise, I don't think I'd play. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I'd like to think that it sort of inspires people when they're watching um, those skips playing, like Mike Galloway as well jumps really – you and him can both jump off the ground. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I wouldn't back myself through that. I'd fall over. <laughs> but I'd, I'd like to think that it inspires people. Like when you go to like a centre event or even like your club championships, I quite enjoy just a bit of noise and a bit of – Emotion. A bit of colour. I reckon it makes people play better as well for those big bowls. Yeah. I think it's sort of um, – Yeah, well, you sort of hype yourself up and it gets the crowd involved as well. But – we we got quite a lot of messages, especially on that um that first uh, season of that three five. Mm. Um, we got quite a lot of outside messages of people that we've never heard of before messaging me and Caleb, um, saying how good it is to see bowls finally come alive. We love following your team. You know, you're so energetic and all that. So that was sort of it was quite a good um, a good outcome really for us. That in itself is exactly what bowls three five was intended to do, wasn't it? Take the sport to people that don't really know it or kind of loosely know it and um, get involved behind mm. teams that they really want to see do really, really well. And are you uh, now a bit of a, 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 a local celebrity, a, a recognised face in the area now, Sheldon? Uh, definitely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, um, there's quite a few people um, around the town that um, that will see you and say, oh, you know, there's a 3-5 happening this year. We've been waiting to see it and all of that. We really hope you do well. So yeah. it's, it's, um, it's been quite good for the exposure and especially for the Gore Club itself. Yeah, that's cool. Yes. That's good. I've got a question about strategy now, Sheldon. So the Bowls 3-5 format is uh, two sets of five ends and it's triples for those who don't know. So it's similar. I mean, we've mm -hmm. had a lot of games in the past which have been truncated down, taken after 2020. Um, there's the BPL in Australia, which is two pairs, two sets of five ends. Yep. But they all have a power play per set. And Bowls 3-5, there's just one power play over the entire game. When do you like to play your power play? He might um, give it away why? with this weekend coming up. Oh, I'm sure oh, people. strategy. Yeah. <laughs> it could be, yeah, double, it it, could be it, a double bluff. <laughs> It, it's quite. Um, we we had the same strategy right from the right from the get go. Um, and it was so if you were um, two or less down going into the last end of the first set, you'd play it because then all of a sudden you only need to score one, and you've either drawn or won the set. And um, and then if you were if we were getting pumped or we were in front in the first set, it would come down to the very first end that we lost in the second set, mm. and just so that you've got that last bowl that you can, you know, somewhat control what's actually happening and, um, and yeah, try and get that second set and try and go straight sets or force a tiebreaker. Yeah, that makes sense. There's been a lot of conversation about it. I've found uh, playing in the regional qualifiers for Auckland that probably half the green, we sort of forgot there was a power play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so. Have we heard of any time where a team has come out straight away onto the green, end one, set one, and decided to power play straight up? Have we ever seen that? Uh, there might have been one, was there? I, I don't um, know. Do you think the, that's a good strategy? Year. Yeah, yeah. that sounds like I could have happened on television. Is it a strategy, though? Do you think you could kind of rock well, your opponent? if you scored a four or a five on the first end, it'd yeah. be good. And if you didn't, then you, it wouldn't. It's a waste. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's a bit hard where because I feel like in our team, if somebody was to do that against us, we'd go, oh, well, sorry, you just wasted that. Oh, yeah. ooh. <laughs> Yeah. Game talk coming yeah, out. Here we go. Can't wait to see this weekend. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So speaking of, speaking of this weekend, um, what we've done this year is that all the teams who are going to be on the televised league that was killed by a pandemic are uh, participating, as well as the twenty six centre winners. Yeah, twenty six it is. Oh, doesn't matter. Twenty whatever centre winners are all going to Nine Eye to converge for this big national bowls three five inter club final. Um, can you tell us your team for that, Sheldon? And, and are, you, are you looking forward to it? Yeah, no, it should be should be pretty good. Um, my team's the same team as what we uh, finished off with last year, so it's um, Flea Hinder and Craig Merrilies. 
um, and and myself, obviously. Um, so no, we've been um, looking forward to it for quite a bit now, and um, hopefully can try and win it instead of coming second. <laughs> <laughs> Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. That's a fair call. Yeah. Yeah. Be- because it's a, um, I suppose we've been waiting so long for there to be a bowls three five of any sort after the pandemic killed the uh, the TV league, and it does count towards. I was saying earlier on in the show, it counts towards the Silver Star yep. uh, title as well, Sheldon. It, so we've put it up yep. there with the National Inter Club and the National Inter Centre. So it's been turned into a national title, which is pretty exciting. I'm just excited to see all you guys sort of um, play. We're going to have a TV rink, yep. which should be good. Um, so hopefully we can sort of recreate some of the atmosphere that we had uh, for that for that TV league. Okay, I've got a question. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've got a question that's got nothing to do with bowls um, to finish off with. And it's nothing to do with garden gnomes because that nope. was the first one. <laughs> it was vetoed. So my question is, when you're making a cup of tea or coffee, and I'm asking for both because it's different, I reckon, uh, what's your sort of water milk system so like hypothetically you've got a cup you put your coffee grounds or in, your tea bag or your tea bag is it then milk and water or water then milk or or what uh it's uh water then milk for me thank you for, yep. for both for both uh, for both yes okay okay i'm on board with yep. this i'll yeah, so agree you burn yep. your coffee mm. okay but uh <laughs> you, but you've got to put you've got to put your sugar in before the water though ah uh, okay i can accept yeah. that yeah Okay, that's yep, good. Yep, nice, nice. If you were making a cup of yep. tea for someone else who had a different order, would you go, ah, you're just getting it my way if I'm making <laughs> you a cup of tea? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> typical, typical skip. Typical skip yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm in control of this one. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Sheldon, and taking time out to talk with us. Uh, we wish you and the Gore Rams all the best in the upcoming Bowls Through 5 Inter Club Finals this weekend, and we'll see you there. Thank you. <laughs> Talking to us next about all good things Bowls 3-5, we have Dave Clark from the Manurua Cosmopolitan Clubs here on the Bowls Hour. Welcome back to the Bowls Hour, brought to you by Somerset Retirement Villages and Dynasty Apparel. We've got Dave Clark phoning in this time, and question for you, Dave. You've been on you've been on the podcast once before, but we're talking <coughs> Bowls Three Five this time. Uh, what made the Manurewa Kites decide to enter a team into the Bowls Three Five Interclub competition that ended you up on television? Oh, look, we'd been watching on TV uh, and all pretty excited about it. And when we had the opportunity to play in the in the qualifying event in counties, uh, we put our best foot forward uh, and we had a lot of people trying to get into that team. Um, back in those days, of course, it was the, the three teams of three. Yeah. So we were able to accommodate for nine people. So a little bit different now. We've had to um, cut down to three people and there's some people probably disappointed they haven't made the grade because they really wanted to be representing Manurewa. Yeah, that's great to hear that you have such competition for getting into your team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I look, the TV thing's done it for, for everybody. I think it's just given you that next level of excitement and, and a pathway through your, your club and centre and, and, and getting into uh, into the national finals is kind of special for us. Yeah, and you guys got big hopes for this weekend? Yeah, we have. Yeah, We've yep. been playing hard. We've been talking about tactics. We're looking forward to the new service at Nainai. Um, I think that's intriguing for everybody mm-hmm. that's been there in the past just to see what changes have been made yep. and I've given Steve Beale a call and, and he's given me the, the, uh, the hot topic of you don't what to, to say, do and you what don't to say to that. <laughs> That's like insider trading Dave. We know nothing, we know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take away. That's cool. Um, so you guys got the, you played in the uh, the TV league which was uh, was pretty awesome. Do you just want to sort of chat to us about what it's like for the, you know, you're just a, you're not a massive club, you guys sort of worked your way up through, won your way into the TV league. What was it like for your club to suddenly have the opportunity to be on this televised stage? Well, it gave them a use to use the, the big screen that they've got at the Cozy Club. They they invested in, in a massive thing that I'd love to take home, but it'd take up my whole house. <laughs> and, um, and so we almost created a grandstand in front of it, and, and people were arriving to the club to watch the Bowls 35. And of course, you know, that's bringing people from the darts and the golf section and, and the indoor bowls, actually. 
um, mm. into the club to, to watch lawn bowls on TV. And that's something that hasn't happened before ever. So uh, just just that new, fresh approach has been fantastic for, for bowlers right across the nation. That's so cool to hear that you have such support from not just the bowlers of your club, but all the other um, comings and goings in sports that you find in your club too. Absolutely. We have we have club days where we're using the orange and blue shirts here and that we're used and people just want to put them on just to look different and be seen on the green. And, oh, nice, know, it's, nice. It's, it's I'll see if I've got any me. spheres that I can get your way. Yeah, the orange ones go down really well. Oh, cool. And the, the blue ones. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about them. The blue ones are a bit subtle. <laughs> so we talk about the, um, you know, we talk about the Bowls 3-5 format. It is a bit different. It's sort of like a 2020-ization, I suppose, of, of bowls. And similar stuff has been done before in the past, obviously, with um, set systems and, and what have you. Uh, but something we asked, the first person we had in their podcast just before was um, Sheldon Bagri Howley, who's a Gore Rams person. We asked him a question about power play, so I'm going to pose it to you as well, Dave, to do with the power play strategy. Because in Bowls 3-5, you get one power play to span your two sets as opposed to one per set. So when do you guys, without trying to give the game away too much, when do you guys like to play play your power play in the Bowls 3-5 format? We probably won't play it in the first set, but we've got a definite strategy of what we might do if we win that first set. No. And I've told my team that if I forget about that strategy, to yell it out <laughs> and uh, make, make, make sure we, we do what we've planned to do. Uh, you can get... You know, the one thing I noticed in the first TV league that I played in, the first couple of nights, um, I got a bit lost in concentrating on the game and, you know, I almost forgot about the power play, um, which was kind of unusual because I backed myself to be remembering those sort of important things. Mm. Uh, and it was, you know, in the first interview with Joe, I remember um, talking about that and, and uh, she gave me a bit of stalling. So I definitely won't forget again. Uh, she'll be she'll be watching she'll be watching me making sure I learnt the lesson. Yeah, she'll come up to you later and be like, oh, I know you missed it this time. You get someone with a sign, just say power except, play. Except if we're playing against her, she might not remind me. Yeah, might be, yeah. yeah. Right. Then you won't forget, will you? Because you'll remember that interview. You'll just be standing there. I will. Yeah, catch I will. your eye on the green. I'm not forgetting. That's great. So yeah, we've spoken about um, this upcoming weekend, and obviously last year we were all g'd up to do the TV league, and we got pandemicked, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, so the Bowl Three Five TV league, as we know it is sort of an, on a hiatus for now. So the replacement is this national interclub thing and who knows what could happen with that going forward. It'll be great to have that. You know, this weekend could be televised uh, conceivably at some stage going forward, which would be brilliant. Um, so this weekend, 30-something teams are coming down to play. It's going to be worth a national title. It's worth a uh, Silver Star point. Can you talk to us, tell us who, you, who your team is, Dave, and, and uh, how excited you are about sort of um, uh, playing? Yeah, so um, uh, myself, obviously, uh, Roger Andrew, who I play a lot of bowls with. We've had a bit of success in the county's uh, region over the last few years. Uh, Roger's considered to be one of the better leads around, and um, and he's really looking forward to it. He uh, didn't play on the weekend or yesterday, and I was, he was down watching our Champion Champ singles, and he's just uh, geared up, ready to go. He's getting all his plumbing work done in the first half of this week, so he can just think about bowls in the second half. And uh, Leanne Paulson, who's part of the high performance squad uh, in the Bowls New Zealand setup, uh, Leanne's come over to Manurewa um, to help us. Um, important for her, you know, to be keeping her name in front of the selectors, and so we felt like um, her being part of the county setup uh, at, originally at Papakura, um, she's come uh, join Manurewa so that she can um, come and help us uh, do well this weekend. That's cool. That should be a good. Um a good team, really. Uh, have you seen your... Have we, we've posted the draw, haven't we? I think the draw went up last week. Have you seen your draw, Dave? Yeah, yeah. We've got a, a few uh, uh, old enemies, shall we say, there. A um, few rivals. Uh, we're looking forward to getting off to a good start. I don't think we'll want to be playing catch-up. Uh, of, of those four sections there, there's some strong teams of there, and I'm not just talking about the Sky Sport uh, teams that have been allowed to come through. Um, there's some uh, champions of their own right uh, come through their counties, uh, sorry, their centre um, qualifying events, and uh, they'll be gunning for those top eight 
sides that have come from Sky Sport. And I think if you didn't win two of your first three rounds, then you might be on the back foot and struggling to catch up. So the first few rounds are going to be really important for everybody. It's a valid a valid point there, isn't it? You've got these eight teams that have come out of a televised Sky Sport League and then you've got all these other teams from around the country going, we can be just as good, if not better. <laughs> yeah. So it's really going to lift the game this weekend. As you say, you're not going to want to give anyone any room. Yeah, well, remember that we were one of those sides that were looking up to the Sky Sport teams at some stage yeah. and had to come in and, mm. and back ourselves against them. And, and uh, look, Bowls is a funny game. You only got to have a few things go for you, and, and next thing you know, you're on the front foot. So, um, yeah, really important. We feel like we've got a target on our back from those other teams, but we've got to prove it. We, we've got to prove ourselves. Yeah. Uh, in this event, it's really important to us to do well. Yeah, yeah. it should be good. I, yeah, I can't wait to follow. I'm not going to be there. I'll be um, somewhere else, but I'll be following it. I'll be watching and it. The, the way I can follow it is that we're going to have live streaming day for the three days. There's a TV rank, I believe, you're going to, or Bowls New Zealand's going to mark out a TV rank yep. in the artificial. And I think most teams get a go at it, which is cool. So yep. there'll be, if you go to our website, if anyone's listening, if you go to our website, um, you can see a schedule there, but everything will be uh, uh, broadcast for three days and we'll have a pretty up-to-date spreadsheet running somewhere as well that should be easy enough to find for all the results but yeah for sure there's going to be lots of people beating each other up I think and that's what you see in these events same as our champion of champion events you get winners from a centre they're, they're good that's why they're there everyone cuts each other's throats uh, yeah. in a metaphorical sense <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we keep that bit in yeah. um, but it's yeah I'm really looking forward to it but I've got a different question for you now Dave that's got nothing at all to do um, with bowls and thank you for talking to us about the bowls it's been good and originally, I was going to ask about people's opinions on garden gnomes. Nope. But Aaron's vetoed it. <laughs> so, so we'll never get to I know. Do with a, I could do with a garden gnome or two. We've just done our front garden up, and I haven't got any garden gnomes in there. So if, we'll get, if anyone's got a spare garden gnome or two, send it my way. Yeah, let what, us know. And info at Bowls New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> what about a flamingo? You know, stick the, the flamingo in as well. But anyway, what is the question? Yeah, we got Alex. off topic. Okay, so the question is, um, what is your tea and coffee walks water slash milk system? So by that I mean like you have an instant coffee, do you put the milk in first or the coffee? And if you have a cup of tea, do you put the tea bag in followed by milk or tea bag in followed by water? I'll tell you a little story. When I was an apprentice, I started with the New Zealand Post Office and everybody said, oh, you'll have to get to like tea and coffee when you go there because that's all they do. And actually, I hate tea and I hate coffee. <laughs> I don't drink either. I never have. In fact, I hate the smell of coffee. And so I'll stick to my water, thanks. Well, Alex, you, you were can, really gunning. You can have my coffee. You were gunning for the garden gnome question, it's weren't gone you? Well. <laughs> I, I was. You can, uh, you can have your lattes and your cappuccinos and all of that, and you can go and put them, you know, where. Yeah, see, so hear that hear that for the rest of New Zealand. Not Fair all cool. Auckland's are all latte-drinking people, are they? Just go talk with Dave. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking with us, Dave, and we can't wait to see how the Minute Era Kites go at the Vols 3-5 this weekend. And, um, Thanks, Darren. Uh, you're welcome, no problem. And coming up next, we're going to be talking to Selena Goddard here on the Vols Hour. Welcome back to the Bowls Hour, brought to you by Somerset Retirement Villages and Dynasty Apparel. We're now speaking with Selena, who first year was a watcher, but has now been picked up in a Bowls 3-5 team, Stoke Thunder. Um, Selena, hi, thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you very much for having me. No worries. So I have uh, my question, which I kind of hinted at already, was year one, we did see you sitting, having a boogie on the sideline a little bit. Year <laughs> two, you actually started playing in the event itself. What were your opinions from being a, a watcher on the sidelines to actually being involved in the tournament itself? Uh, I'm just a huge advocate for, you know, Bowl 3-5 and the event being televised, quick pay 
uh, you know, power plays, all of that. So when I was watching, I was really thrilled to be in just like a spectating atmosphere, but also had a whole lot of FOMO and just the fact that I wasn't, <laughs> at, you know, out on the green. So um, I was just absolutely thrilled when Stoke, you know, gave me the call and said that they'd like to have me play for them. So, you know, since season two, if you put it that way, I've yep. just loved being a part of it. Oh, cool, cool. Was it, what was it like to be out on that uh that TV rank, were you sort of mentally prepared for it? Did it feel different to other bowls, other bowling tournaments you've you've played in? Yeah, I guess so. Because, uh, you know, the TV rink is sort of just centralised on one rink and you've got crowds going all up the side of you and the cameras, you eventually block them out. You don't really realise them. There are a few times when they did come a little bit too close for comfort. <laughs> um, you know, didn't want to stand up too quickly after delivering a bowl. But um, ultimately, you know, the game is so quick. Um, I really had to just take in the atmosphere quickly and then just get my head into the game to, you know, just focus on that. Yeah, that makes sense. That's good. And, as you know, it's that two sets of five and things you blink and your game is sort Done. of oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. come and gone. So um, the club you play for, uh, Stoke, can you just chat to us a bit about sort of um, the group that's there and what support you get from them during the, the Boa 3-5 season? Oh, I mean, I don't think it goes without question that Stoke has one of the best, if not the best, supporting crew when it comes to bowl 3-5 season and actually just, you know, throughout the whole bowling season as a whole. Um, I love the community there at Stoke because they get as excited about watching, you know, us play as we are playing. Um, so this year um, there's myself, Robbie and Shannon playing and, yeah, really, really excited again because we've played a few times now throughout the last few years and, we understand, you know, the roles that all of us play and there's a huge buzz between us three. Um, and then, of course, we have our super-duper manager, Brendan, who just yeah. makes sure that we're there at the right time and, you know, getting those chocolates. So, yeah, it's a really great atmosphere being a part of Stoke Thunder. Brendan's probably been more of a mainstay of Bowl 3-5 than anyone else in the entire competition. <laughs> yeah. Is he going to be there this weekend with you guys? Yeah, we actually only we heard from him um, a few days back that he's going to make it happen and pop by and come say good day. So, yeah, nice. really thrilled that he's going to be there. That's cool. Awesome. So, yeah, this weekend uh, is sort of the first National Bowl 3-5 competition we've had in a while because last year, TV League, we got killed by a pandemic, which is unfortunate, and it's uh, sort of... Um, not going to come back as it was for the foreseeable future anyway, the TV League. So this is Bowl 3-5 now, this national uh, interclub final. Has there been much chat leading up to it? How are you guys feeling? Yeah, we're, we're feeling pretty good. Like we, we we always keep in mind when, you know, the crunchy time comes ahead and the comms always ramp up that little bit more. And, uh, you know, especially having someone like Shannon in the team, he's uh, very aware and analytical and he's just such a good... Uh, teammate that you want who can kind of hype you up for those moments. So we have been getting those those hype chats happening uh, to get us ready for it. And yeah, you know, you mentioned that it's a new format too. So uh, really looking forward to getting down to Wellington and sort of talking as a team and working out some strategies on how we're going to you know, combat all the tough opposition we're going to come up against. And there is quite a bit of tough com um, opposition that you've got floating around down there. So you've got eight televised, uh, eight Sky Sport teams that would have played last year and you guys have all held your own in that competition and you are now being thrown into the bigger picture with all the other winners from centres who previously would have been chomping at the bit to try and get there to get the win so that they can get onto this um, TV platform and be one of those selected eight teams, if we want to go down that way. Um, there's going to be people out there this weekend who are, we're actually better, we should have been picked, <laughs> or we can, if we were on TV, we would have beaten them in that game, or, you know, all that banter that goes around the community and stuff like that. Do you have, do you have, like... Do you feel any targets on your back from any other clubs out there in particular that reckon they should be in, in the event more than you guys have been? Or do you are you guys pretty confident that you're like, yeah, we've got this? Uh, <laughs> I mean, 100% what? when you have, when you're entering in an event when, you know, you've been in someone else's shoes or in our case, you know, winning it, um, winning it a couple of years back, there is definitely a target on your back. And I mean, so there should be because... 
you know, I take that as a compliment personally that they, you know, see us as a team that have performed well and, you know, they're out to get us. And I mean, bring it on. I love it when that competition happens uh, because, you know, there's going to be quality bowls that will come yeah. out and, you know, that's the most enjoyable part of the game. Yeah, when people get the buy and they want to win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's good. <laughs> right, so Bowls 3-5, we spoke, I've asked, I've already asked two people to give up their secrets, really. It's a, it's a good time before the uh, National Cup final, but we know it's a different, it's a slightly different format to a lot of the truncated games so we've always had we've had set systems for a long time uh, and we've had power plays for a long time but ordinarily a power play if you have a two set game you get a power play per set and one of the points of difference to bowl 3 5 is that you get one power play for the entire game uh, so you have to choose if you want to play it in your first set of five ends or your second set of five ends do you have a personal preference do you have a do you have a, a strategy or a theory on when a power play is best used Oh, well, I can't unleash my secret, <laughs> but yeah, I might keep them, you know, tucked away, but I think that the best strategy is just not to forget you have your power play. <laughs> I mean, I mean we've fair. seen it, haven't we? We've seen it, and look, we're all victims of it as well sometimes, especially in those, you know, centre-level games, club games, I remember a few years back, um, you know, I've played in a bowl through five format, and just totally forgot about it just because I was so enjoying the moment I was enjoying the evening breeze and all of a sudden damn I wish I remembered yeah. we had a power play yeah. <laughs> I think we've all been there <laughs> that's fair yeah. um, so your Bowl Street 5 has been around since 2018 now that format uh, have you noticed or what's been your observation of sort of the the bowlers around in regards to the format, do you think it's been sort of taken up well? Because now we see uh, uh, bowls are doing Twilight Bowls 3-5 as well as our centre and, and club events. What's the chatter been around where you are? Yeah, I think that Bowls 3-5 has been great for the sport in the sense of, you know, Bowls 3-5 being a staple in New Zealand. We've also seen other countries implement some other type of fast forms play as well. So... I mean, if you're looking to attract bowlers to the sport, if they had seen a fast play format, uh, you know, if that be on Sky Sport or in New Zealand or maybe it was internationally, it's been really good that, you know, the communities have been able to offer mm. a game similar that they can play. And it's only going to take half an hour of their day because if you're wanting to attract those new bowlers and especially, you know, speaking for the generation of myself who are, you know, working Monday to Friday, don't have too much time. I'm a huge advocate for these quick games, um, fast games, and also in the sense that you don't always necessarily have the best of the best players winning because of that power play. Mm. And, you know, it does bring in that element of strategy. So I'm a huge advocate for it. I've seen a lot of the clubs, especially around around me, throughout the country, use Bowl 3-5 as a way to attract new people to the sport and so I mean you know keep up with it because it's been it's been really good from what I've heard. That's a great answer to that question. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay so we've got another question now and it's a question that so we segue away from bowls and we've asked um, the other two or three. We originally Selena were going to ask you how you felt about garden gnomes but we've moved on from that. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I did not have an answer for that other than well, scary, that's, it's worked yeah. out well um, we've moved on from that because Erin told me it was a silly question which is probably a fair call so we've moved on uh, to asking what your tea and coffee water milk system is so I'll explain that a little bit further so pretend that you've sat, sat down at lunchtime or afternoon tea and you've got a mug and you either put a little bit of coffee in or you're making a coffee or a tea, when you put your coffee in the cup, is it coffee followed by milk, followed by hot water, or do you go coffee, hot water, milk? What's your system? Oh, oh this is a great question. Um, so I actually don't drink coffee, but I do drink a lot of tea. And I've come from a very English background. I mean, I was fed tea from a very young age, and I'm talking strong tea. Yeah. So to me, I really appreciate a good cup of tea. And for me, that is really not much milk. It's quite strong. So I don't know. My recipe for success is tea bag in first, hot water, just like a drop, you know, sort of tablespoon of milk. Um, mix it around, keep mixing for a good solid, you know, two minutes, 
and then you've got a perfect view, a perfect brew in my eyes. And no sugar, eh? Because we wouldn't put people who put sugar in tea are heathens, in my humble opinion. We all dabble in a bit of sugar now and then. We all need it, but we, you know, good thing we've got those alternatives like sweetener out there. To... <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. English okay. breakfast. Okay. Yeah, English Ingi brekkie with a bit of sugar can't go wrong. Well, everyone's entitled to an opinion. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Selena. Um, all the best to you and the Stoke Thunder this weekend at the National Interclub, and we look forward to seeing you down there. Thank you guys as well. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Selena. And thank you, listeners, for joining us for this episode of The Bowls Hour, the show for all things bowls. If you enjoy listening to this podcast, remember to share it around and we can be found here every week as well as Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, Facebook, the Bowls New Zealand website or wherever you get your podcasts. Tune in next week for more talk about everything bowls. Until then, roll on. Um, they were rampaged along, won their first two games. They've lost their last two, but they could have probably won both of them. Fantastic looking facility there in the deep south. I'm sure they're going to come out fine tonight. From memory, he was leading last week. Are you going to be leading this week? Or second for bottom with six points and second for bottom with throw? Yes and no. Yes and no. It paid off for them. They got a two, double to four, and one six point. Depends what the teams above you do, doesn't it? The Bowls Hour, brought to you by Somerset Retirement Villages and Dynasty Apparel.